Hi friends, welcome back to Common the Chaos Homeschool. So today is the last video in my curriculum pick series. If you haven't been here the past few weeks, I put up my math picks, my language arts picks, my history, geography, science picks, and today I'm going to be covering all the things that I didn't include in those videos. So electives, kind of the extras, um, we've covered the core, but now what are some of the extra things that we'll be doing in our homeschool next year? So if you're new here, my name is Davine and I will be homeschooling for kids who will be in sixth, seventh, eighth, and ninth grade. So middle school and beginning high school. My high schooler probably, we're not 100% sure on this, but she'll pro probably be attending part-time at a public school. So it's like a part-time school where she'll go twice a week. And in the two days that she attends, it is supposed to be almost a full workload, but it is a parent partnership program. So we are expected to do things at home. So she'll have some homework to do on the other days, as well as we will have some electives and things for her to do here. We will still be including her in our family time whenever we are together, so the other three days a week. Before I get too far into this video, I want to let you know that today's video is a collaboration video hosted by myself and Shauna from Homegrown Homeschool. I will have a playlist in the description box below where I will link some videos that other homeschooling moms are making on this topic. So the topic is sort of electives, extracurriculars, things like that. So if you want to hear about what other homeschool moms are doing with their kids, don't forget to check that playlist after you're done watching this video. All right, so I have my sticky notes here. I just wanna make sure I don't miss anything. I'm glad I took a while to think about this video because probably still missed something even though I've been writing things down whenever I remember the things that I am going to be including next year. So hopefully I don't miss too much, but I do have quite a few things on these sticky notes. So, so I'm gonna start with the Big Life Journal for teens. My two boys who are going to be in sixth and seventh grade next year, they really enjoyed Big Life Journal for kids version this year. And when I asked them if they wanted to take a break from it, or if they wanted to take a year off from it, or if they wanted to go straight into Big Life Journal for Teens, they both said that they would like to do the Big Life Journal for Teens. So I'll link a picture of that here, and I have done a review and flip through, so I will link that in the description box below as well if you want to take a look at Big Life Journal and why we keep coming back to it year after year. Next for languages, we have been doing Mandarin Chinese as a family for three years now. And I'm thinking we might not be doing that again in the upcoming school year. No promises, I might decide to add it, but for now we're not going to do it as a family. Also this year we have been doing Spanish as a family. And so we are going to continue with that. We have the Family Spanish by Masterbooks Academy. It's online videos and you get it for 18 months and we're definitely going to utilize those 18 months so i think we have until like at least the end of next year to continue on that we're probably about halfway through the program so i've been speeding it up a bit we usually do it like twice a week but i've been trying to do it three times a week whenever possible my kids really do enjoy it and so it's a mix of video lessons with a very energetic teacher. And then we have these PDF print offs. And as you can see, it's quite thick right now. And this is about half of the course. So I'm going to have to like empty these out and put in the other half of the course. But it has a lot of fun activities. We've been learning our numbers. We've been learning polite, polite terms, colors, fruits and vegetables. Right now we're learning mi familia, so my family. And I have no background in Spanish at all, other than my husband's from San Diego, so he knows a little bit of Spanish. It's a really good Spanish program if you don't know anything and your kids don't know anything, and it's just been a lot of fun. So we're looking forward to continuing with that next year. And then I am not 100% sure, but my oldest, who is in ninth grade, she did pick Spanish as her high school language, which is why we've been doing Spanish as a family this year to kind of give her a head start or get some familiarity with it and um, if she does it or not will probably be based on if I if I think that she can handle it next year 
but I just went and picked up a bunch of Spanish resources at um, the homeschool gathering place when we were in North Carolina. I think it's in Raleigh or Durham, one of those two places, but it's a great store if you haven't been there. And I love to be able to look at what is available and flip through it. And so I do have these resources and even though I don't speak Spanish, I'm pretty sure that I can put together a course for her or a Spanish one for her. We will have to find some ways for her to learn how to speak the words and say the sentences and things like that. So I can organize the curriculum, but I cannot help her with her pronunciation. So this is kind of a maybe. So we have some resources for Spanish if we decide to do that with her next year. And maybe we'll just wait until we're done our family Spanish so she has a full foundation before she gets started on her own Spanish for high school. Next in languages, my eighth grader, she is going to continue with her Mandarin One course that we started this year. So she is full on doing Mandarin Chinese. These are the books that I'm using for her. I do speak Mandarin because I did grow up in Taiwan. So that is a language that I am fluent with and I can help her with pronunciation and have conversations with her. She does have a tutor that she meets with once a week who is in Taiwan. And so she really enjoys those lessons with her. I don't know if we've been, we're into like our second or third year with the same tutor. So she just kind of does more fun, conversational, cultural, things like that with my daughter. And then I plan out her lessons in these. So I have a conversational book here and then we have basic written Chinese here and practice here. So we're doing all the things. We're doing conversation, some writing, basic writing, and some reading. And I'm learning to read alongside her. I do read at maybe a grade one or two level with Mandarin. So I'm learning some new characters and she's actually doing really well with it. She can read a lot of the words that we've learned so far. So that's, that's going well. I'm going at this at a very slow pace. I'm not going to give her her Mandarin one credit until we are about halfway through these books. I feel like this should be good probably for two years of Mandarin. So I would say that she has maybe earned half of a Mandarin credit at this point for high school, but I'm just going to keep going with that and award her a full credit once I feel like we have done one year's worth of Mandarin Chinese. And she does do Duolingo every other day as well. So that helps with practicing conversations and listening to different conversations. All right, next I have art and I have a lot of things here for art. So this probably was not on purpose that I did this, but it ended up this way. So first of all, we have been using Bestowing the Brush for two years now, and it's an online course, and I feel like she recently revamped the course. So when I'm in there, I'm not exactly sure where we're at, but I also see a lot of new lessons, and so we might just keep going with that. I thought we were almost done, but now I'm seeing a bunch of other lessons, so I'm not sure how much we're going to be doing with bestowing the brush, but basically it is a brushwork chalk and charcoal course. And so we've done some watercolor brushwork. We've done chalk and charcoal at this point, but I might just keep throwing that in throughout the year until we finish all of the lessons that are available. So after that, a new art that I'm going to be doing with all of my kids, all four of my kids during our family time if you watch YouTube videos, you've probably heard about it. It is Have I Got a Story for You or High Gatsby art. Um, we're going to be doing the Renaissance period because we're just going back into ancient and medieval history this upcoming school year. And so I don't know a whole lot about it because I haven't looked at the program in depth. I think it comes with like 12 video lessons and 12 like activities and assignments. So I don't know. So we'll see how that goes. I think you get some art history in there as well. And I think that my middle daughter who is going into eighth grade, she's probably going to end up with an art, um, not an art credit, she will have art credits, but a art appreciation credit by the end of our high school because we do a lot of art appreciation in our home school. And so this can definitely count towards her credit of art appreciation. So we do that and we have a whole bunch of things that we do with art as far as like Charlotte Mason style. So. I think that should be lots of fun and hopefully educational and we'll learn like history of art and things like that using this program. The third art program that we have coming up next year 
is for my eighth grader. She is going to be doing one of Artistic Pursuit's newer programs. It's Art Core 5, and it's drawing with water-soluble graphite pencils. Um, yeah, so that just looked interesting. It's not something I've ever seen before, and she thought that looked interesting. So that is a half credit of art. So that can be a half a credit of art for her for high school. And we just decided to go with a half credit next year because <laughs> she will also be taking a photography course that I have been searching for high and low. I've been looking for a photography course for her it's been about a year since she expressed interest in taking a photography course in our homeschool. And so I've been researching and looking around and a new course just came to my attention. It's from the company Film for Teens. And they have a whole bunch of different courses. They have film course, they have like um, graphic design courses, and they had a photography course. And what I like about the photography course, so it's for ages 14 and up, I believe, She's 13, but she's a mature 13 year old and you don't need any special equipment. So she can use one of the iPhones we have lying around here and she'll be learning a bunch of stuff like editing and photography and lighting and all that sorts of things. So I believe there are maybe 18 video lessons and then there's a workbook that will come along with that. I don't have my hands on that yet, but I can definitely give you guys a look later on if you're interested in getting a look inside this course. So that is going to be a half credit for photography. So basically she will be getting a full art credit next year for high school. So <laughs> that's what we're doing for art. So there's about four different components, two of which are specifically for that eighth grader. Next, <laughs> health. <laughs> I wasn't actually planning on doing anything for health specifically next year because we have been doing Guest Hollows Junior Anatomy. It is a very thorough, like full body system, health, nutrition, exercise, all those sorts of things course. And we have really, really enjoyed it. So I wasn't planning on doing another health course this year just because my plan was to be done Guest Hollows Junior Anatomy by the time we were done this year. However, our parent partnership program insists that we cover health every year. They would like us to cover health. And I didn't want to just pick something up for the sake of picking something up. So I checked with my, um, our advisor teacher and I asked her if we could just stop what we're doing this year and save the last bit for next year for health. And she said, that'd be fine. So <laughs> we're going to be going into year three of Guest Hollow's Junior Anatomy. Now, we are close to the end. I am definitely going to be spreading this out a lot. We don't have a lot left, but we do have, I don't know, eight, 10 weeks left. And not doing health for the end of the school year really is helpful in taking off a mental load on myself and letting me get ahead in some other things that I'm feeling behind in as far as group work, like our my boy's science, um, actions and reactions from Guest Hollow. I'm feeling really behind in that and then our geography from Bookshark. So this will just give me more time this year to work on those things and then we can get back to health next year. So we still have like nutrition and urinary system. We have the endocrine system. We have the in, into, 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 I don't know, integumary system. I don't know what that is. I think it has to do with germs and your body fighting germs. So there's a, germ week or two weeks on germs diseases and parasites uh that sounds fun to me like two weeks on that the immune system drugs alcohol things like that and then there's like growth and reproduction which we did cover at the end of last year but i have another book that my boys can go through and then there's survival and what to do in emergencies which i might not do just because my youngest Okay, so personal stories here. My youngest, he really thinks that he should be able to go live in the wild and he doesn't understand why he can't just go live in the wild. So he has a few times tried to go and live in the wild unbeknownst to us. So like we did find him very quickly. However, right now survival skills and things like that, he's like crazy interested, but a little too interested in all those things. So. We 
probably will not be focusing on that in our homeschool at all, as long as he is a little bit obsessed about living in the wild and survival skills and things like that, because he really just doesn't understand why an 11 year old boy can't go live in the forest by himself. So, so that's a bit about our homeschool that you did not know about. Um, so, so there's health. Okay, I didn't write this on my notes, but I did remember to pull it out of my cart. Uh, this is Living Harmonies. So I guess this is kind of art as well. This is a music course that we started in the middle of this year. We are making good progress on it. Mm, I think we'll probably get just over a third of the way through and we just do it very rarely. Like I would say once a week or once every two weeks but it goes through like different styles of music in different areas of the world, which is why I picked this up because we're doing world geography right now. And so flamenco music, we just finished that. We're working on jazz right now. There's Tarab from somewhere in Africa. There's Gamdalane from Indonesia, Armenian folk music we did because we were studying that area. There's Hogaku, Japanese, Appalachian music. So European and African mix kind of thing musical theater, cumbia from Colombia, and Scandinavian folk music. So out of these, like between 10 and 12 units, and we are on our third unit, we might get to the Japanese music just because we are trying to get to Japan in our geography. So that will leave us with about two thirds of this course left. So Living Harmonies, we just do that every so often. It's been a lot of fun. And that's by Thistles and Biscuits. And before I forget, I will link everything I mentioned in the description box below if you want to take a look at any of these things. So the next thing I'm showing you is a maybe. It is a we have it, I would like to do it, I'm not sure how into it we will get, it's kind of wishful thinking. And I told you I was going to do it or get started on it. So we'll see how this goes. Um, this is probably reliant on whether or not we finish our world geography. And if we finish that, I might be able to pick this up. So <laughs> guest hollows, government, economics, and personal finance curriculum. I purchased this course over a year ago. And you know, there's all this pressure when it's an election year to do government and things like that. And I just wanna be able to fit it in. And this course looks amazing and it looks like lots of fun and I really want to do it. To me, like government sounds like such a boring topic. So if anyone can make it interesting, it is going to be guest hollow and personal finance as well. That is just such an important topic. So there's a lot of pressure, I feel, to do government things, but my kids are still young. And I think that this course is probably a little too hard for them at this point. So I'm looking at it and I'm looking at some of the resources that are suggested in there. And I might just start with some of the resources that they suggest and stop putting pressure on myself to get to this course fully or even like go through it the way it's supposed to at this point and save it for when my kids are a bit older, maybe the next round of elections. So that is one that I am... I'd like to do, but probably if I'm really realistic, we probably won't get to. Along with that, there is a course that I thought that if I do, <laughs> if I do do this, it would be more for my girls who are in eighth and ninth grade, and we would definitely not finish it this year. It'd be a multi-year process. And so what I did was for my boys who are a bit younger, they're in lower middle school, and probably just not going to be at that level yet, at Guest Hollow's level yet. I'm going to pick up Not Grass's Uncle Sam and Me. So that is actually on its way. I was looking at it and I think my youngest son especially would enjoy that textbook. We don't use textbooks very much in my home. I am much more of a literature based, get all the books, um, use all the different books to teach things, but I think that in looking at the samples for this, I think it'll be a good one to go alongside this. So I might be mixing and mashing things together 
doing guest hollow a little more with my older kids and then doing this middle school curriculum, Uncle Sam and Me by Knotgrass. So let me know if that's something you would like to look at when I get a copy of it. I would love to do a flip through and just show you what it looks like. So those are the I would like to do. Maybe not this upcoming year, but maybe. Okay, so going along with that, Guest Hollow, like I said, has amazing suggestions in here. And not only do they cover government, economics, and personal finance in here, they also cover a lot of logic. One of the books that Guest Hollow suggests that I actually already own, and I thought maybe we might be able to get started with, is this. So The Fallacy Detective Lots of homeschool parents talk about this, so we'll see if it is the right level for my kids. I feel like we're at the point where middle school, early high school, it's a good level. I've owned this book for a very long time. I'm not sure where I got it, but I think I might start going through this with my kids next year for Logic. It'll probably be part of our morning basket. And then I also picked up the Thinking Toolbox. It's on its way. I feel like it's like part two of this. So if we really like this, then there's that. But that might be like a future year thing. I mean, this one has 38 lessons. So I can't imagine going through more than a lesson a week. So probably thinking way too far ahead. And if you know me, that is how my brain works. I am always thinking ahead, always in the future. So sometimes that's good. It's good for planning. And sometimes it makes me very overwhelmed and I think too much about curriculum and curriculum choices and future curriculum and all those sorts of things. So another thing I almost forgot to include in this video is also financial literacy. Like I said, Guest Hollow's government, economics, and personal finance includes financial literacy, but I feel like my kids kind of need to build up to that level. So I do want to also focus on financial literacy next year with my kids. It's not something we have been super focused on so I'm going to be using Evan Moore's financial literacy for the fourth through sixth grade level. I'm planning on using that as a group subject. So using that with all my kids and just getting a foundation in financial literacy. And I'll try to include things like that in our morning basket. Something that I don't usually plan at this point of the year is my morning basket. I often take a look at what resources I have available and I sort of think about my focus for the next year when it comes to planning out my morning basket. So I will be making a how I plan out my morning basket video sometime in the summer because that's usually when I sit down and just like pull out all my resources and kind of do that prioritizing and deciding what I'm going to be putting in my morning basket for the upcoming school year. So if you're interested in things like that, and if you like videos like this, don't forget to give me a like and subscribe so that you don't miss any future videos. So I almost forgot to include that in this video. So anyways, that is the curriculum that I have to share with you today. As far as extracurriculars in the upcoming school year, I can only guess what my kids will be doing based on current interests. So my girls have been doing dance. They both do hip hop. They've been doing that for years. They really enjoy that. So. I'm not sure my ninth grader, I'm not sure if she'll continue with that or not. With the change of school, we might need to take a break at least the first semester with a new schedule. Um, so I'm not sure what she'll be doing as far as that goes. My eighth grader, she actually is interested in cheer. So I've started to research that to see how to get her into a cheer program. So uh, I think we have very limited spots in our area. So I'm going to have to like get on that. I think I am in contact with the right people so that as soon as registration is out, I can get her registered. So I think that's maybe the way she's going to go. She's been interested in doing dance, like competitive dance, and I don't know how to do that in this area. We live in a pretty small area, uh, so really we just been, we've been doing dance lessons, but it's not competitive at all. She's quite coordinated and she's really interested in it. But apparently our cheerleading team in the high school, so when she gets to high school, if she's in cheer, they do do it competitively. They're pretty good. So that might be a good avenue for her. Anyways, to try out next year, my seventh grade son and my sixth grade son, they have been doing Taekwondo on and off for the past two years. My seventh grade son has expressed some interest in trying out basketball in the upcoming school year. 
So I'm researching that. I think it's going to be part of the middle school. So we're researching that. And then my sixth grader, I'm not sure. He might do Taekwondo. He might do nothing for a while. I don't know. Um, he always has sports he wants to join, but he's just not at the point where he can join sports and behave in the way he should in a team setting and listening to the coach and things like that. So he's been doing Taekwondo for a while to kind of build that up and show us that he's ready to listen to instruction and follow direction. So really Taekwondo is kind of his only option at this point until we see some changes, some maturing and things like that. So that's where we're at for extracurriculars. Um, my kids go to two different youth groups once they're in middle school. Um, my youngest will probably just go to one. He will join our church youth group. And then there's another youth group that my kids have been going to. And that's more on a, when I feel like you're mature enough to go, we can go to another youth group. So that's one of their social things. We have like a church homeschooling group that has been getting together for the past four years, I guess. I've been homeschooling four years, so going into fifth year, but there's some changes coming up. And so we'll see if that's still going. That's like we hang out on Friday afternoons and go to parks or somebody's house and do art. It's very casual, so it's a homeschool group. Yeah, and then my kids do those extracurriculars and we go to church on Sunday. And so those are sort of the things that they do socially right now and I anticipate to continue in the upcoming school year. So let me know what are some electives that you are doing with your kids next year? What are some extracurriculars that you guys really enjoy? Are there some courses that you found that you're really excited about next year? I would love to hear that in the comments below. And if you found any really great resources, definitely link them in the comments below as well. Don't forget to check the playlist below to see what all the other homeschool moms are doing for their extras, electives, extracurriculars for the upcoming school year. And thanks so much for coming today. And I hope to see you all in my next video. Bye, everyone.